Hello, Alex. Do you? It's great to see you here. Welcome, welcome. How is everybody doing? Hope everyone is having a great day. This is going to be one of those streams where I'm honestly not sure what we're going to be doing. But we'll figure it out as we go along. There's one thing, though, that I do want to... That I do want to try out. And that's like a tweet that I saw from Asher Zoo. Talking about some, uh... Foliage lighting. So... I'm gonna see how that works. Because I'm really curious. I'm gonna... Gonna have a look here. Um... I'll share the tweet in a little bit. But let's just... Have a chill moment. See how people are doing in the chat. We can we can switch it over. Um, in the meantime, let me give you an an update. Right, where were we at? So if we go to my other scene, hmm. where did I just presentation level? Oh, yeah, okay. So, what I started doing... Oh, now I know what we need to do. Okay, so what I started doing last time was... Um, behind the streams, so, like, after the stream, I started putting out, like, all the assets that I've built for... Um, for the entire level based based on the pack that they're going to belong to, right? Because I wanted to get, like, an overview of which assets were going to be useful in which... Uh, which packs? Also, um, because Unreal Engine makes it like really confusing with its um, uh, with its pivot points. I started having a look at the pivot point setup, and I think that like all of my modular pieces need to be rotated ninety degrees. So that's going to be a fun one to solve. I'm probably not going to do that on stream, because that is going to be boring as hell. Um, but weirdly enough, I made, like, all the assets with the correct orientation, apart from, like, maybe this one. Um, so they should all be good. It's just a modular piece that I need to rotate. Which means that I need to go through all of them, and then update all the... Um, update all the blueprints as well, at the same time. So, yeah. You can, uh, you can tell, right? That's going to be fun. <laughs> Hi, the apples. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for asking. Doing great. Um, yeah, so that's going to be on the cards. Probably behind the streams. Let me actually make some notes, right? So, pivot point update. Gonna get my trusty... Let's see notes, notes out. So personal work. Um, so pivots for the modular pieces. It's gonna be one of them. Okay, but you can see that we're kind of we're kind of getting a little bit organized, you know. Um, this gives me like a better overview of what the assets are going to be that are going to be included in like the different packs. And I think what we'll do is we're going to include all the market assets in the base pack, so that the base pack kind of has like your generic stuff and then also like a bunch of the market assets too and then in addition to it we're gonna potentially build outwards when it comes to carpentry you know and leather working and painting and all that kind of stuff but that gives you like the generic set with like all the market assets in like one pack and then maybe we build out with like separate dlc packs the way the way that i'm currently seeing it um, but we'll see. We'll see. 
So yeah. First thing I want to do today though, like I was saying before, I want to have a look at... I want to have a look at a scene that has foliage in it. And I want to try this out. So this was a tip that was shared by Asher Zoo, and it's something that I've struggled with for the longest time, honestly. Where, um... The stuff that he's doing here is he's using... Let me see. Uh, Shadow Switch Pass. Yeah, so he's using like a Shadow Pass Switch over here. That goes into the opacity mask and gives you like more control over how much light is gonna let through. So I was like, oh, this is interesting because I kind of always felt that my foliage was gonna be or was a bit too dark. Um, and I kind of always try to get around it with like other ways, right? But you can see that once we get to like a uh, let's say more like a, a dense area that it kind of feels too dark i want to get started with that so let's uh, let's see if we can try that and yeah as always if you're new to the stream um it says it right on the the screen right now but feel free to ask any questions right during the stream Bring up any discussion topics, like anything that can help. Would be more than happy to help with anything. Got weeds, we got burns. Oh wait, I think I called it. Hey Megval! Happy Friday! Let's see, we have the foliage stuff. We have the opacity mask, which is just basically controlled by the alpha of the base color. Which in this case, alpha just looks like this. Okay. Interesting. Let's see. So shadow pass switch and then we have like um they call it like opacity control or something like that. and then we multiply the alpha like that that goes into the shadow and then the normal input just goes in there right make sure there's a ditter between it as well Also, this might affect performance a bit, given there's more transparent pixels now in the opacity mask. And then, I agree with the principle that there's very little sunlight is transmitted through the leaves. I like the idea of applying some opaque trickery here, because the current best global illumination solution is very bad at bouncing light among leaves. Yeah, yeah. With Ditter Shadow, we at least get some dark contrast. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is from Asher as well. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look how it looks. The only thing that we need here is a ditter. Apply that into the shadow. A little bit messy over here. Apply in there. Are you finished with the roofs? Um, yes. That is that is a good question. I think we finished updating all the roof modules. So the roof modules are done, which is quite nice. Happy about that. Um, let's see. Yeah, I even updated like the thatch roofs, which was like the last thing that I needed to do. So yeah, all the buildings, like all the modules. Are done 
We're quite happy about that. That's good. Let's see. This opacity goes from... Oh, okay. Okay, so one is max opacity. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. So we're gonna set it to one by default. Then we're gonna see. This is one by default. Let's bring up our a little. So I have like a little control over here now. I do really like that. I think um, if we then balance it out again. Let's have a look. Were to turn this down to zero. Yeah, this is League of Legends music. Right here. Uh, 0 0.6. This actually looks pretty good. Kind of happy with that. Like, it doesn't... I don't think it actually changes anything to, like, how the light is scattered, right? So... Oh, it does. Yeah, of course, because it's changing the opacity, right? The opacity mask. Oh, interesting. So that means that we're going to get like more natural shadows as well, which is freaking awesome. I like that. Yes. Okay, that's awesome. I really like that. This might have an effect on how things look in the scenes, though. Um, could have taken like a before and after. Right, but let's say... We kind of reset it. And then... Yeah, okay, so this is it with one, right? So this is what it was before, actually. It's smaller. And if we were to turn it to zero, then we're getting all of the light shining through, which is also not good. But if we then turn it to 0.6... We're getting some more light coming into the scene because it's only going through like one layer of leaves, which is pretty, pretty cool. It also adds like adding more interest to the leaves as well. So I'm actually pretty happy with that. Thank you so much, Ashes Zoo. I will send this link in the chat as well for people to check out. Because uh, this is really helpful. Where do we send that in here? So go check that out. Give it a like. Share it around. That's been pretty helpful. So it does look so once you directly look at the sun, like the light, then you have something like this.
don't know. Kinda still looks weird. What do you all think of it? Like, does this... Because it kind of looks weird that it's still, like, so... Coming so heavily through the leaves, right? Well... But then this doesn't look good either. <laughs> this is the thing, right? Like, you can keep tweaking this. Until forever. I think a 0 0.6 value works pretty... Pretty well, actually. Okay. That was actually pretty helpful. Okay. Now though, um, let's... I feel like we need to possibly... Balance some other stuff to the trees first before we move on. want to have like a good view I know this is like a very strong lighting scheme to be working in because I had some other stuff in here right so Subsurface scattering strength. I need to start learning Unreal. There's so much cool stuff. Oh, you haven't learned Unreal, McFall? What is it you use for rendering now, then? Do you use Unity? Let's see, I think that's good for now. We will... I'm gonna do a pass on the trees anyway, because the Geo needs a bit more work. Uh, you can see that once you get up close, that is... It's not that great. So we're gonna do a pass on that. Let's see what needs to happen. <clears throat> oh, we use Unity for game projects in school? Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, like, Marmoset is good for rendering, like, individual props, right? It's just only when you want to go to, like, full scenes. You can still do them in Marmoset, but... I find it like way easier to work within a game engine rather than in Marmoset at that point. Hello, designer! Okay, so. Get stalls, they're done. Let's have a look at the list here. Like I said, people, this is live and uncut. I have no idea what we're going to be doing today, so let's just have a look. Got the metal braziers as well. Hey, designer! Oh, I didn't did say that already, right? Like, how are you doing? Got these metal braziers. Got the the wooden the wooden bed, the thatch bed. Let's do that. Let's get started with something. Got 
Because campfire, metal chests, the flags as well. Lanterns, we got signs. The signs are going to be interesting. I think for the signs... I think for the signs, I want to do like icons, right? Like make a set of like medieval carved icons or something like that. That we can then... Uh, either carve into wood as a decal or something or maybe just have like a painted decal I don't know we do some fun stuff with that but all the tents and then some of the wells need to be finished as well yeah we got these guys Lantern and like these two posts. Hay bale. Oh, there's one thing that I wanted to do here. We're kind of jumping from left to right here, but hey, welcome to my streams. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna adjust the the base color here to make it a little bit darker. So that it fits with the wood more. It's good for now. I'm doing well, thank you. What about you? Yeah, I'm doing good too. Kind of didn't know what I was going to do today, but we'll figure it out. We just had a quick look at some of the foliage improvements. Because I found like a really neat trick on Twitter to get like more light through like multiple layers of foliage. Uh, so that worked out really well, actually. I'm happy with that. And now... Gonna see. Think. Where's my bed? They're not in here. The hay bale is, so we can work on that one. <clears throat> oh, and the uh, the cloth bag. We can we can really improve on this guy as well. Yeah, let's start out with the hay bale then. I'm going to do Oh, actually. It would be good to have another scene open. A modular kit so that we can... I'm trying to be lazy, you know? Like, I'm trying to cut corners wherever I can. Without sacrificing the quality. So what I'm currently doing is I'm gonna look at... Who... The roofs with attach, like these guys, and I'm just gonna strip out like some sections and add them onto the hay bale. Because why the hell not? Copy this. Move it over to this scene. Oh, yeah, of course, it needs that. 
Oh, that's interesting that it brings that over as well. Because I'm using that in geometry nodes to, to scatter, right? So it brings that over automatically, which is actually pretty sweet. And uh, playing around, I think, I think I'm just gonna do it manually. So with like a face project, slap some stuff on here. Good at it. And it works with the scale as well. Designer has a question. When it comes to trim sheets, is it good to plan and make your trim sheets and model based on it? Or you make your trims after you finish modeling? No, no, no. You make a trim sheet first. Because the power the power of a trim sheet comes from... Uh, well, you need to do some planning, right? So plan first. Know what kind of dimensions you need for your trim sheet. And then once you did that, then do early testing so you do lots of early testing try to do like a bunch of iterations in the beginning and once you got all your strips laid out like the way that you want to have them laid out then try try your first set of modeling right because the thing the thing with the trim sheet is like if it's a good trim sheet like you can model model around it right you don't want your trim sheet to be restricted by your modeling like your modeling is going to be like an addition to like a good trim sheet let's see Why is the shading so weird? There's a, on our website, there's a, there's an entire guide on how to make trim sheets. If you want to check that out, that's probably going to be like pretty helpful. happening here I think it's a little bit weird but sure is it just like the normals that are just like completely screwed it doesn't seem to be It's also not back facing. It's using the same material. Let's see. So that is also not using. Weird. Oh, it looks like that. So weird. Let's 
Let's actually have a look at some ref here. Hey, Bale! We go with like a square one. Oh, this is cool. This guy is cool. That guy is going straight to my rev board, honestly. Let's add it. Let's see. Chunk. Put that on there. This is cool as well. I'm just finding some random pictures here. This haystack is cool too. I even do like the, the proper square ones. Because it might just be that I made a thing that it's probably like the, the most most on the nose, right? But maybe they didn't even do it like that. Medieval hay collection. But they had like the circular ones. And they had like the tiles as well. 15th century. And this is cool. I'm finding a bunch of cool ref here. Oh, hell yeah. Let's have a look at this guy. How much do you cost? Oh, only $14? She. This is a steal. Oh my god. I can't believe that. Does it tell you, like, how many sales? Role models? What is all this? It doesn't tell you how many sales, right? It's crazy. What a bargain. Yeah! Can't believe that I'm making stuff myself. I mean, look, if people buy this stuff, yeah, it's good on them. It just makes me realize that I need to ask more for the stuff that I'm doing. <laughs> um, let's see. Square ones. Honestly, yeah, maybe maybe we shouldn't go square then. Straw bales. Medieval hay making. Okay. I just want to have the YouTube link, please. Thank you. I'm in the. I know, I'm skipping through like a lot of it. Doesn't really say anything about like how. How they would store it. Right? <laughs> hmm. Cool though. What a bargain! Okay, so... Oh, that's cool. So... We're not gonna do the square ones then.
Maybe we'll do like a circular one, right? It's like a... Okay, screw this. So... Maybe we'll do like a cylindrical one. Let's get a character ref next to it as well. something like this something that people would like take on their backs right uh, maybe you have something, something like this happening now what we could do is kind of have it like spray outwards and it will have like a little bit of rope or something to keep it together so maybe something like that instead and then you could still put that on the floor We'll put that on the floor somewhere, right? And it will have, like, the bigger pile next to it. Hey, Snowbat! How's it going? Yeah, so maybe, maybe we go for something more like that instead. And what do we have? Like, we have these kind of piles. They look really, really awesome, though. So, let's see. Start out with a sphere. What I'm gonna do. Oh. I'm gonna remove the bottom of it. Square one got removed. This is actually like a good time to talk about what just happened, really, right? Um, because I think this is interesting that um, I was looking and I'm trying to explain my thought process here a little bit more, right? Like I was looking at the square hay bale and like internally what I was thinking is like, is this really what it was like? But I was still hesitant to look something up, right? Uh, but I realized at a certain point, like, no, like, we need to, we need to look some, look up some reference, make sure that it's correct. And because I started looking up references, I also discovered that there's not too many references when it comes to, like, square hay bales, right? And now the end result of that is that we're going to end up with, like, a bunch more interesting looking, like, hay formations that look way more medieval, like medieval, than, than the previous one ever did, right? This is like a modern, what is it, like combined harvester or whatever they're called, like type of hay bale. But this is, this is like more handmade and it has like more of that medieval charm to it too. So yeah. I just want to highlight that, right? Because that's really important. Like the thought process that goes behind it. And yeah, that's that most of the time it's okay to be like, hey, look, I'm stuck here. Um, I don't really know how to progress or I have the feeling that something's wrong. Um, then it's time to look externally, right? Like um, really look at, hmm. Maybe this isn't the right way to approach this. And then rethink your ways. Because it's from your little errors that you make that you probably learn the most, you know? Just want to throw that out there.
kind of we're kind of just using like a campfire stick assembly. Um, ropes could definitely Im be improved upon that. to move back somehow right while well, keeping like more interesting silhouette i think what we need to do is move these guys out as well because it does look like they're they're kind of sticking out it's pretty pretty interesting as well I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna add like a quick plane here. Just so that I have like a reference of what the floor is gonna be like. Okay. Because I do wanna have these poles like sticking sticking more into the floor, right? So that we have something something like a, a buffer zone that we can play with. That's big! Hey man, just recently got into environment art, found your channel, been having fun, and was super helpful watching the couple of workshops. Um, but seems like everything has a set pace around here. Um, was thinking about joining the Patreon, but would like to do some pre-prep. I can actually try to be a part of any events, including the ones like the, the team environment art. Any tips? Oh, um, well, if you just got into environment art, then just keep doing what you're doing. Right? The the team challenges that we run, they are they are for people that are at a level where they're almost ready to get into the industry, right? Um, and we kind of want to give them like the last push when it comes to it. So before that, I wouldn't really see. It's probably best to just focus on your skill set, right? Like your personal skills. And then you can really apply them whenever you want to join for like a team challenge. We do have like a bunch of other stuff that's going to be really useful in your artistic journey though, right? It's not only the team challenges, but we also have like a PDF that I've, that I've written, like full of tips, early access to workshops, all that kind of stuff too, right? Yeah, if you're looking to pre-prep, I would say just, yeah, uh, keep doing what you're doing, right? If you just started out. Like, strap to it. I don't think this would be like a very stereotypical way of doing it. Still looks interesting. And then this guy, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna make a quick block out for something, right? Because it kind of inspired me. So. I'm gonna make it really quickly. This, this block out is basically to make sure that I don't forget about it. I like that they gave the, the hay bay a little hat. Yeah! It's just missing like a smiley face or something, right? Next to it. Smooth. Right. Let's 
So most of it already looks pretty good. It's off. Two. don't really mind how that looks as a base. What we're probably going to do is I'm going to separate this, this out. Give it like a little, little bit of a push here. And that gives us like a little bit more freedom to do whatever we want with this guy over here. Because if we want to... Yeah, so that's the textile density we need to work towards, right? So we still have, like, a ways to go. Or... Sadvik is saying, um... But I still find trim sheets daunting, like a proper production-ready piece, using a single or a couple of trim sheets. So, the, the thing when it comes to, like, learning new, new skills, right? Is that you have to compartmentalize them into bite-sized chunks. So, for a case, for, for like, an object, or like, a skill, rather, um, like, trim sheets, right? Don't try to make, um... Uh, don't try to make an environment that uses multiple trim sheets. Just do like a little test environment or like a little diorama or something like that. That uses trim sheets. Because in that way, you can you can really try try out like a trim sheet, right? And see how it works. Rather than already dedicating yourself to something that has to be good and has to be finished and all that kind of stuff, right? So make like a little pedestal or something like that. Like honestly, the the introduction from Polygon Academy is a pretty good one. Let's see. Right, if you wanna if you wanna get into like the the process of trim sheets like this this tutorial is like a really good one and also like the the environment itself right like if we if we look at the screen right here like ignore all the stuff around it only think about like the little pedestal even without the vases and stuff like this is perfect for getting to know how trim sheets work right you don't have to do more than that but once you get with grips, like, oh, okay, so I can map, like, this trim here. I can do, like, an inset, add, like, another trim here. Once you get to the basics. Um, once you get to the basics, then, yeah. It's really about, like, compartmentalizing the skills, right? And, like, really focusing on the one thing. And, yeah. That's the main thing you want to focus on. Thank you so much for taking the time to answer basic questions. I'll hang around more. Yeah, no worries. I mean, it's a it's a stream where I'm doing my own work, right? But I'm also here, mostly here, to help people as well. Because honestly, let's be honest, like the stuff that's going happening on screen, it's not going to be interesting most of the time. But that's fine. That's what making an environment entails, right? Um, so... I think what we should do is break it up into like more segments even. So... Let's maybe... 
Why do we want to do this? Oh shit. Here to see. So. Nope. Definitely not. Why is that separate? Oh no! No way around. We're gonna have a seam in here somewhere. Straighten all these guys out. to rotate the whole thing. What I'm currently looking for is I'm actually just trying to fill up like the the base shape. Right? With something that kind of looks like it's appropriate. I know that it kind of doesn't look like much right now. But what we're gonna do in the next step is we're gonna cover up like the areas that don't look good. Well, I'm, I'm happy-ish with like the, the stuff that's happening up here. Now, because we could then duplicate this. And then we, we have like little skirts. And if we have them on the sections that have like opacity in them, it kind of gives us like a little bit of an overhang. Okay. I honestly might need to update my opacity too. Oh, actually, no, nah, let's not worry about that. It's not going to look like this in, in the end. Don't care. Again, I'm trying to cover up the seams here. And I'm honestly not gonna worry about like how it looks right now, right? Like in terms of like the, the base shape. Just trying to get something going here. up. Scale this guy down. So we kind of have this shape going on. A little bit of layering. Pretty cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can use my little script that I made on the base shape here. I'm kinda just curious to what it does, right? So
Yeah. But the issue with my script is that it can only do like one direction, right? So it's kind of made for flat roofs because I couldn't really figure out. Mm. No, and I removed the controls of it too. It's interesting. Hmm. How would we solve this without changing? Without changing the script too much. We're making it like. At the Kalama, is this for fun or something like a challenge? No, this is personal work. So it is going to be sold um, on the Unreal Engine marketplace, right? But I'm doing it for like personal work first. So let's call it fun. Mm. Oh, wait, I have line with normals. Oh, I think I removed that because that doesn't do it. Hmm. It's also interesting that it can only read up until so far. Yeah, see, like, you can deal with that sort of shape. Because what I'm doing is I'm drawing a grid on top of it, and then I'm projecting it down onto it. So whenever I have an overlap like this, you can't, you can't read it. Let me, let me, let me have a look. Ah, oh, it's not individual pieces, right? Mm -hmm. Cause what I was thinking is maybe if it separates it out into individual pieces, then we can like rotate like all the pivot points to align to the mesh underneath, but mm. that's all work, huh? Okay, what do we get if we remove half of it? So maybe what we could do is we could kind of cheat the system, right? We make like a quarter of it. Yeah, let's try that. Kind of cheating around my own tools. So what if we make like a quarter of it? We... Oh, wait, 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 so... Yeah, let's see. That's, that's kind of what we want, right? Oh my god, this is getting so hacky. <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, okay. Then let's see. Here. this right and it was just need to adjust rotation in here Did I even do that did I build that in no, I don't think I did dang it
Yeah, are you working on something, Tactical Llama? Okay, so we kind of know that this works. And then... Uh, whatever, we'll just do it like this. One thing that I do need to figure out is why... Crystal Fake has subbed! Thank you so much for the sub. I appreciate that. Um, roof A Scatter. Roof hay scatter. There's a bunch of stuff in here. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. I'm honestly just gonna remove all this stuff. Nope. Oh. Yeah, what is everyone else working on today? Anyone working on some cool stuff that I don't know about yet? Please let me know. So the issue that I now have though... Hi Rory! How are you? I can finally find you streaming again. Hi chat. Oh dang. Where have you been Rory? Oh, McFarlane's UV mapping. Fun, fun, fun. This is kind of shit in the way that I build it up, though. Not gonna lie. Playing games while UV mapping? How dare you? Let me add some, uh, let me add some more guilt. <laughs> um. Okay, I think we're just gonna try this. I'm kind of, I'm kind of done playing around here. So, we're just gonna lapse this, make sure that the UV map is set. That's good. Then I'm just gonna duplicate instanced and just rotate that like 90 degrees. Oh, isn't there like a fancy button? And then like redo last, right? Repeat last. Shift R. Let's go. And since these are linked, now I can just like squeeze them in wherever I need to. I can start like pushing and pulling a little bit. Oh, you had a couple of months where I had to do some checkups and some therapy, but I'm fine now. That's awesome. Glad you got some help. And I'm glad to see you back here as well.
So, let's push this down. Let's squeeze that in here too. And it took us like a little bit to get here, but hey. We're here now. Hey beta! Happy Friday! Welcome, welcome, welcome! Wait, designer! Um... Oh yeah, yeah, Mikita is saying the same thing. It sounds like the project that I'm working on right now. Um... Yeah, yeah, exactly. We had a look at it on Whip Wednesday. So, super interesting stuff is happening. Um, designer, have you started working on it? Or do you want to work on it? Whoa, what was the process creation for that asset? Pure, um... Bush cards? Uh, no. No, no, it has like a solid shape, right? But it has like a solid shape and then on top of it we added like additional additional bits i think combination of the two always works best Let's see the the main thing that we need to do here is right now it's kind of it's kind of too perfect right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna Add all of this together. Oh, wait. Let's actually make sure that these guys are popping out a bit. participate in Wednesday uh, with Wednesdays, I need to sign up to the Patreon, right? It's time. I'd like to receive advice on my work. Yes! Yeah, yeah. Um, all people that are a part, like all the members from our community get access to Whip Wednesday. Whenever they want to sign up, they just have like... I'll show it really quick. So, there is our work in progress se section where people can just like post their work and they kind of have like a thread of their work and then as soon as you just want to have um like feedback on it then you just do like edit tags and you just add like the whip wednesday tag and then i'll watch it i'll watch it and give you feedback and anyone can do this which uh, actually reminds me i still need to post the the overpaints from last session sorry about that guys <laughs> And hi, by the way. Hi, Mikita. <laughs> what does the um, what does the block out look like? Like this. This is the shape. Very simple. Very simple. Yeah. So okay. We've got like all these clusters, right? Now I'm gonna add everything together and then I'm just gonna grab the main shape and I wanna do everything. And now we're just gonna push and pull the shape a little bit. To give it like some extra. Some extra irregularity, right? <laughs> 
this is this is what I oftentimes refer to as like adding character to it. You know, like nothing is straight. Everything kind of has like a little bit of, yeah, just character to it. A little bit of pushing and pulling. Making sure that we don't get too close to the bottom. Do you use the same texture on both the solid mesh and the cards? No, it's the same. It's uh it's one texture for everything. Well, apart from the wood, right? These little guys like the ropes. We just have to do like a little bit of cleanup. running into the issue that we can see the seam here, right? So a couple of ways around this. Covering it up with like a couple of these sections, right? That's one way. And then another way could also be adding a little bit more variation to where the seam is. I'm at the blockout stage. Still didn't figure out how I want the final scene to be. Oh, okay. Early days. I thought you forgot or just skipped the overpaints this time. No, sorry. Um, sometimes, like after after the stream, what I'll do is I'll I'll just chill out for a little bit, and then sometimes I'll forget to like post them later on. So I will do that after this stream today. We'll get, we'll get those uh, paintings in there. Over paints. Let's see. Rory, since it's been a while since I caught you, what do you think of the current situation in the industry? It's a bit, mess bit messed up. Well, it's not only our industry, right? Um, I was actually talking to someone about this, like, before the stream, that it's not only us. It's, like, tech in general. Let go of, like, I don't know, what is the number? Like, a million people in total, right? Um, it is a bit messed up, but I also think that the people, the people that just keep keep working on improving their skills and don't get too distracted by the stuff that's happening now um, are going to be the people that are going to come on top of it, right? Um, obviously, the people that have been affected by it always sucks. Um, I kind of I kind of said this before. I also hope that it kind of opens people's eyes to... Um, build like a little bit more of like a nest egg or build up like something outside of game something that they have full control over rather than 
uh letting letting a company control like all your income right i've always been like a big fan of that and it's always easier said than done but especially as an artist i would i would happily encourage like people people to always like pursue like an like an outside like side income and like honestly like if you play it smart like you don't really have to put in too much work to get something going right most of us are building portfolio pieces anyway so if you take one step further and you just say like hey why don't i just sell this right put it on like a marketplace make sure that it kind of kind of has like some extra features for people to use it nothing special right but just do like a little bit of extra work sell it on the marketplace and there it is you have your start to towards like some some kind of passive income right um because yeah it does suck Right, but I, I'm always, I've always been a big fan of taking personal responsibility, being like, okay, shit, this happened to me. Um, I'm gonna figure out what the current situation is right now, and then I'm gonna build towards something that is gonna prevent me from ever being in this position ever again. Because, especially bigger companies, you know, like. If they have if they have like shareholders to to take into account like and especially if you're like a lower seniority they're not gonna they're not gonna really care right they're a business they're there to them they're there to make money not to give you a job i know you know like I, i'm kind of sounding harsh here but i'm just saying saying all of this stuff just to to get people like a little bit more motivated to potentially look Look at it in a different perspective, right? Where you can you can make like a like a, a decent living or like a side income, right? And then build up a nest egg and then have like um what is it? Like a, a reserve, like like an emergency fund that is just there for whenever you need it. For whatever reason. Does that make sense? What do you all think about this? Because I'm, I'm always curious to hear what other people think. Maybe get a discussion going on this topic because I think it's a very... It's gonna be a... Well, it is a very current discussion. But also... It's... It's one that is gonna happen more often. I feel. Like, this is not going to be the last time when it's going to happen in our lifetimes that there's going to be, like, shakeups and mass layoffs and all that kind of stuff. And also, I want to make sure, right, that there is still people out there that are getting jobs right now as we're speaking about it. So I don't want to, I don't want to go into, I don't want to sound like I'm fear mongering people in that there's no jobs and that there's never going to be jobs ever again or whatever, right? That's also not my intent. I just want to set people up for something that's probably going to work better for them, you know? Yeah, I will be really, really curious to think, to hear what people think about this, though. Honestly.
Is that like haystack? I agree with you, if you want to work as a 3D artist, you have to be covered. Selling via marketplace, doing courses or tutorials or something else is a great way. Do not depend on only one company. Yeah, or... Um... <laughs> yeah, and this is going to be no surprise, right? Or just get people paid more so that whenever something does happen, that people don't have to be afraid of living paycheck to paycheck, right? Again, there's a notion of personal responsibility there as well, because I know, I also know of people that earn like a really good wage, um, but then don't spend it responsibility, right? So there's an amount of personal responsibility that has to be taken care of there as well. But yeah, it would also help if just games companies in general would pay a little bit more, you know? I saw... I saw some openings from, from a company this week. Um, maybe maybe let's not discuss this stuff under like such epic music, you know? Um, yeah, I saw some um, I saw some job openings that had their um, their wages publicly displayed, right? Like they were they were trying to be like really open and transparent about it and i think that's great but if you are a company that's then not putting up like a competitive salary you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot like i think they they were paying like senior senior environment artists i think right specifically environment artists like 32k that was like the, the wage that they had on there. And I saw that number and I was like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do anything like that for 32k. Screw it, you know? Even, even if I wasn't in like the position that I am now, right? With like beyond extend and all that kind of stuff. Uh, nah. So it's very interesting. And maybe it's also a sign of, of the, the current stress on, on the marketplace, right? Like the, the job, like the labor marketplace. Where they think that lower numbers like that can work because people are getting desperate. Yeah. No way. No way. But yeah, I've always said this and I'll say it publicly as well here, right? Like on stream. If you ever want to chat about um, me helping you out with like, let's say, let's say you have a portfolio piece, right? But you're not sure how to start selling it on the Unreal Engine marketplace. Reach out to me. I'll be I'll be happy to guide you into like what makes like a good pack for well what makes something that you could sell on the marketplace, right? 32k, I often misunderstand English. Yeah, yeah. So 32,000 um pounds in this in this respect. Sorry. And thanks for asking that clarification. Sometimes, uh... I'm not a native speaker either, right? But... Yeah, no, I just want to say to people that, like, if there's ever anything that I can do to help you with getting your first pack on the marketplace, just let me know. Because that really changed things for me. Once I started doing it once, I was like, oh, shit, okay. 
it opened up like a whole new uh yeah a whole new world okay let's get this guy in hey jake hey max good to see you both here how are you both doing Maybe we'll, uh, we'll create like a... Yeah, so if we... Create this guy, so we have only the sticks. I'm just gonna make like a, a quick variation here. It's almost like a pudding or something like that. And I'm just gonna rotate it a little bit. Just making sure that it looks different from the other one, right? Very much looking forward to the weekend. Hell yeah. Me too, even though I'm probably not gonna do I'm probably not gonna do anything different. Um there's like a bunch of stuff that I wanna finish up for for the new year. So I'm just gonna keep grinding away on on those things. Let's make it a little bit chunkier at the bottom as well. <laughs> it's actually kind of interesting how much... Like how you can make variations like this like really quickly with just like a soft selection brush. Like a soft select. So cool. Okay, let's get both of these guys in. So about planning, I've always started making really basic shapes for the block out just to get an idea of the positioning, but then I find it hard to get an idea how overall the look will be. So how detailed should the block out phase be? Um, I think the answer isn't the question that you asked, designer. Um, if you... Like, a good way of looking at it, right, is a block out is there to give you, like, a good indication of what you think the end result should be, right? So if you're struggling with seeing the end result, that means that you need to put more time into your block out. Right, there's no, there's no set standard of, like, oh, this is how detailed a block out needs to be. Um, sometimes they can be really, um, really detailed. Sometimes they don't need to be, right? I'll see if I can have, have like an example here. Uh, Because honestly, with a block out, you don't need to go that far, right? Um, Let's see, what is a good indication? Right, so you could you could have this block out here. I'm gonna put them side by side. So. Oh. 
You could have these two. Right? These two next to each other. Um, I already knew what it was going to be like when I built the left one. Right? Um, but the right one I built because I wanted to... I wanted to convey that to other people as well. And you can see that the core of the scene didn't really change, right? Like the detail, the detail just in increased in terms of like the amount of props that we want and all that kind of stuff, right? So the scene was already clear to me from the left, but I only continued working on it because I wanted to convey this to other people as well, because this was going to be like a collaboration between people. Um, so yeah. I just want to bring this up that you decide how far you need to push it, right? And yeah, that's that's all you need to know, really. It's you decide like how far you need to push it just to understand like, okay, now I have a clear vision of what the future of the scene is going to be. And now I can just focus on like making it more detailed, right? But even, and I'll say this, right? Like even in this one, Right, like even in this scene, most of of the stuff here is like super simple, right? It looks very complex because there's a lot of stuff that happens, right? But then if we if we zoom in to some things, like these cardboard boxes is just like a cube with like a bunch of cubes added onto it, right? This is also just a cube. This is like really quickly motorcycle stuff right this takes me like i don't know like five minutes or something like that just to bash stuff together right and then once i have one variation i just strip like the front fender off of it i give the body like a little bit more variation and then i have like another variation right um like most of this stuff is built like really really quickly right it doesn't have to be perfect like this bike is gonna go into it who cares like we can clean that up later you know who cares about the details yeah let's get these hay bales in so, um, assets, unique pieces. Uh, that's not good. It's not good. Thank you so much no worries so the, the most important thing and this this can be applied to so many things right when it comes to like making an artistic project a lot of it just has to do with listening to yourself and it sounds it sounds cringe it sounds like uh, like i don't know like it sounds weird right but if you if you know that you're building a block out but it doesn't feel good yet right then you need to continue blocking out because you have a hard idea how it's going to look in the end. That's also something that's going to increase over time, right? Like the more stuff that you do this to, like the, the more scenes you build or the more projects you build, the better you get at like projecting things, right? That's also where um, experience comes in, right? Like as a, as a junior or even as a student, like it's very hard to like estimate how long something's going to take or like even plan what kind of workflows and what kind of steps you you have to you have to do right to get to the final result and then over time once you do it more and more and you get like a broader insight into what's available then you can tell like oh this is going to be a trim sheet this is going to be a second uv this is going to be unique so i have like the focus there blah 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 and it gets better right I always get so lazy in the preparation phase, but I suffer later because of it. Yeah, me too. Um, I'm going to be honest, like, you can see that in my scene here, right? Like, my scene, the way that I build it up, 
I didn't really have a concrete plan, which is also why it's taking me such a long time to build it. Right? But I I get to I get to a point where it's like, okay, I want to make like a small building like this. Cool. Then I get to a stage where it's like, hmm, I don't like this. I'm gonna I'm gonna expand on it, right? Because I want to make it feel more like a scene. Cool. Then I have one scene. Uh, let's see. I have a second scene that I started building. This is a completely different scene. Then I have uh, like another scene here. Then that was sort of the same one. Then I started like another scene, which is more like in a forest. Uh, and you can see where this goes, right? Like all this stuff, like so much time invested into it. For no good reason, right? Just because I didn't have like a clear end result. Now, in my position, where it's more about like the journey rather than purely the end result, I don't care, right? But if I were to recommend someone who's trying to get a job or he's trying to like up level their portfolio, this is not a good way. It just isn't. I want to be very clear about that, right? Like the stuff that I'm doing with my portfolio, or like with my project here, is purely based on the situation that I can get to spend as much time as I want to on it. If I were to do this for a portfolio, I would be way more structured. I would be like, okay, cool. These are my weaknesses. I'm going to build, I'm going to build portfolios towards those weaknesses. Yeah, long way of saying, plan ahead. <laughs> that's what it comes down to. Like have a goal in mind, right? That's what we're, that's what we're trying to work towards. Because like having that goal in mind is also going to help you with when, when it gets tough, right? When you're like, uh... I don't want to do this. Like, why am I doing this? Like, if you have a goal in mind and you can stick to your goal, and you can you can kind of use your goal as like an anchor point, right? To work towards. Yeah. Like a goal is not only to help you get the stuff done quicker. It's also there to keep you motivated. So, yeah. It's good to have one. Okay, and then, yeah, planning helps with that, of course. Take. Take. Let's bake you as well. So, the hay bale is going to get removed. Because we've got hay stacks now. And, oh, this is my other scene. I don't need you anymore. Nope. Nope. Don't really... Care too much about... Sky now. Where's it used? Three references. That's not too bad. The entrance level presentation. But yeah. That is exactly why. It's exactly why we we work in steps, right? Like in iterations, it's just to get us get us to the end goal in like a structured manner. This can go. Let's 
obviously just gonna remove this. Like I kind of know where they are gonna be. It's like three references. Let's go. Let's make sure we add it to the list. Like remove it from the list. Mm. Hey, Bale. Tents, some wells. Hmm. I kind of want to see... I don't know if this is going to work. I have no clue. But I kind of want to see what we can do with like an archery target. We kind of... that The stand for it is looking good. We can just duplicate that from like another piece anyway um i'm curious like how good we can make this guy look oh this is cool like references like we did before <laughs> these are cool as well a sheet oh like a wooden one that works as well I wonder if we can make a spiral pattern like this. And then kind of make it look really good with the UVs. How would you do that? How would you make a spiral? Let's, uh... Let's get a test dummy. I'm gonna be very experimental here. Curve space. Um Hello, Pablo Taz. I'm trying to change from Maya and Blender, but I still can't because I'm missing the vertex snap with V in Blender. Have you worked around it? Uh, um, nah, I gotta say, I don't really use it that much. And when, when I have to use it, like I just literally go to vertex snapping here, right? Which works, which works great. It's also been a while since I used Maya myself, so I have no no comparison point. Um, yeah. I have no clue. I think it just takes time to get around it, no? How would I? Ears. Team builder? What is that? Good to know, thanks. No worries. I mean, I didn't really do anything, but. <laughs> Wall factory. What? Oh my god, what the?
okay. Uh, yeah, no thanks. I don't need a wall factory. Taurus. Twisted Taurus. Hmm. I am not sure how we're gonna do this. Because, like, my first... Curve spirals? Yeah. So, I was going that direction. Let's have a look. Curve spirals. Curve? Curve spirals. Never used these. Where are you? Wanna... Uh, curve spirals. Oh no, that's a preset. Mm. Yeah, so we need like negative radial growth. And then just increase the turns. Oh, no. Oh, I see. So this is per per radius. Okay, okay, okay. Unk, unk. Oh, not too far. Yeah. Okay, and then. Kind of merges with like, kind of merges with like the the outer perimeter circle. It's pretty cool. Okay. Kind of use that as a start. Then. Uh, not extrude. That's an eater. Right. Thank you for that, Bodhi. This will do just fine. Still just gonna do something like this. Hmm. A little bit chunky. Probably have to clean that section up manually.
Hold up. Hold up. Let's make a backup of this. And then... Convert this all to a mesh. <laughs> so interesting. see because I think yeah we could even remove like an extra one here oh and then merge them all up but that's gonna be gonna be a pain on that oh man it'll be so interesting so straighten that up that doesn't look right Where does it get screwed up? Around there. <laughs> this is so chaotic. I love it. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Okay, that looks good. Cinnamon bun, let's go. The deep. Mm. could do is trying to get some like variation into it right I guess what we could do take a couple of sections and then move them up and down like that seam big the interior one The merging of this is going to be hell, though. How does how does this work? Like a section here.
Mm -mm. Mine is actually a little bit thicker, but I don't mind that. It's kind of stupid that I removed the little section here, though. Interesting, but now we're running into the UV issue. I don't. Like I just extended it. Yeah. So interesting why it can't beat that shape anymore. Oh, wait, no. No, no, no. That's my issue, right? I connected some of the bits here. Ah, we didn't even solve it. Hey, Dominic! Thank you so much for the sub! Oh, wait, maybe it's this guy as well? Yeah, okay. That was the one. There's something weird looking about it, though. Something is up with the normals, it looks like. I guess this gives us like a, a good start. flat if you wanted to right because you're you're never gonna see that really Issues with 
sea fighting. So we're going to sort that out momentarily. I should have done that when it was still flat, huh? Um... The, the shape is closed. Kind of moving all these guys into it so that with like a nice transition. I don't know how how long have you been using um, Blender Ford and Pablo Tas if you're still around. Cinnamon bun. Are you a fan of cinnamon buns, Megval? I'm honestly... I don't know. I'm not sure about them, you know? Some pretty good ones, but I'm not generally like a fan of cinnamon. gonna do with this guy is we're gonna whoop, seal one of these where are they Thing break yeah because i updated the ropes and all that kind of stuff so hey henrik how's it going Slap that on there. Replace it with the archery target. And then while we are at it, let's rotate it as well. Go. Canelo Boulevard. <laughs> it's illegal by law in Sweden. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apologies. I'm sorry that I've just, um... That I've just given away that I can never move to Sweden. Damn it. Okay. So, patch number one. I want to make like a clean patch, you know? I'm just going to duplicate the material instance here. 
I'm just gonna slap that on. So we're gonna open open the asset. Add our new clean patch on top of it. And I'm gonna remove. I am gonna remove the green channel. I'm gonna remove the red channel. Yeah. We can definitely make this more interesting. Eh? Back of it. <laughs> Can't do it. Mm, let's see. Let's see. Just kind of needed to look specific. Hey Dominic! Glad to be a new subscriber, you're doing great stuff. It's actually so relaxing for me now to work on 3D on one monitor and see you doing yours on the other monitor in the background. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm glad that I can prov provide some entertainment slash support. Because yeah, there's 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 a decent bit of struggling myself here as well, so scale up just a little bit to It's always really hard to Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask people, right? Like if you are listening to this in a VOD or like in a recorded, in a recording after the live session. Feel free to leave a comment down below and let me know that you're listening. I would be really interesting, like really interested to see how many people like listen to this. And especially since you're like two hours into this random recording. <laughs> I'd be curious to see if people, uh, people are actually still here. Because uh, I have no clue, right? Like, I can see the numbers. Yeah. But, like, I feel like numbers is always such, like, a weird thing, right? Like, if I if I were to say, like, oh, 200 people listen to this, for example. Like, that doesn't sound like a lot. But then you put, like, 200 people together in a room, like, all staring at you. And I would die because that's a lot of people. <laughs> it's so interesting. Push this in a little bit. There we go. And I guess what we could do to make this more interesting is... Let's actually try that. So... If we were to... Duplicate this guy. Extrude it out just a little bit. And then have... This edge... Oh shit. Not that edge. This edge. Now, like a little bit more. And then we're gonna map it to. Section down here.
Hmm. That's gonna look a little bit too uniform, right? So if we then... Ah, oh, this is the part that I love, you know? Like, just little tweaks here and there. Just pushing and pulling. Just makes it look so much better. Maybe... I mean, so much better. Then it's a work. Trust me. Maybe we could do... Okay. I'm gonna separate all of this out for a second. We're gonna make it look like a bit more organic, right? Basically the same pass that we did with the... With the hay bales as well, or like with the haystacks. Only want you guys. We're gonna do that here too. trying some stuff here to see what works because I'm not sure about this but there's only one way to find out making it look like a, a really shabby like archery target right? not shabby like it's still put together with some handiwork right but it's not it's not perfect this just feels like a little bit too perfect yeah it does look like a giant sunflower now though <laughs> And I don't like, I don't like the way that this is like so uniform, right? So that's definitely a thing that we need to solve. Like a weird seam at the bottom as well. How are we gonna do that? Oh, an easiest, the easiest way would just to be 
manipulate the, the UVs again, right? That's only going to solve like a part of the issue though. Here. I think it's all right. And we can do like more polish on it later. Oh no, wait, there's one thing that I do want to solve. That's the, the seam at the bottom though. What is happening with Oh that's Is that the seam where they come together? Yeah, that's the scene where they come together, huh? Okay. Solution for that is that we push down the normals of this one. So if we were to separate these two guys. Well, that's not a nor Well, it might be a normal issue, but not in the way that I thought it would be. also isn't good. something really interesting happening. I don't know if like the normals are broken. Okay, that's flat. Auto smooth is on. strong yeah. hey this works out good just scale that down a little bit Welcome! Thank you so much for subscribing. Okay, let's actually have a look here. So, the archery target. We kind of stumbled into this one today. Which is good. I mean, it's it was on the list anyway. Oh. I should like it before we scaled it down. Why? Go back. Sorry. How big is that target actually? 
I think I measured it before, but let's have a look just to make sure. Yeah, that's pretty big, huh? We see one with like a human next to it. <laughs> I love this. Medieval man stands in nature. <laughs> oh my god. What does it say? Medieval man stands in nature, arrow curve, quiver stands besides target. Let's see, like that's taken up like his upper body, right? Let's scale it down just a little bit. I think this was a uh, was very chunky. Okay. Cool. I'm actually quite happy with that. It's looking quite nice. Nice. So, Archie Target. Let's call it done. Screw it. Screw it. bed who else is kind of surprised that blender hasn't crashed yet just because i'm really i'm really putting it to work you know we have a scene here with, what is it, like 22 million tries open, and it's doing pretty well, gotta say. <laughs> this is just like a recipe for disaster, right? Like something just waiting to happen. Mm-mm-mm. What are we going to do? Oh yeah, we had like the to-do status as well. The archery target is done. A whole bunch of buildings that still need to be done. How many pieces left in to-do? 180? a little future tab here oh no uh, yeah we can we can do it that way if we select all of them don't want them into to do I want them into future right okay now we're gonna do the same thing for Painter, right? Everything is just for the future. Letter working as well, even though it's not too much stuff in here. Carpenter. Mm 
Yeah, there is like a bunch of finished stuff in the, the carpentry section that I've already done. Table. That's okay. So. Stuff that's still to do. We got the tents in there. We got the, the bags. We got buildings. Doesn't look like too, too bad of a list. Those buildings are quite far along as well, so that's going to be relatively easy to do. Tents shouldn't be hard now that we have like a proper material and we know that we're gonna how we're gonna do them because they're basically the same as like the market stalls, right? Got the materials for them set up. The tent is just gonna use the same kind of material. Right. Question is always, what are we going to do next? The buildings, the flags. The rope. The rope for around the pillar, but that honestly doesn't look quite nice, so... I think honestly what we might do or what I might do is call this one short so that I can recoup and think about the, the plan for the next stream. Because I feel like right now there's just going to be like a bunch of very, very boring like admin work that I kind of need to go through. Like making sure that I have a plan for like which are the next assets, kind of cleaning up like the assets that I don't longer need. And I don't want to do that on stream. So I'm probably going to keep it short here, people. Thank you so much for being here. I know it's a little bit different than a normal one, but I promise next time we'll uh, we'll have like a proper plan. We'll, we'll kick it off then. So thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it still. Um, if you want to you know like if you want to hear my voice like there's there's a couple of other recordings out there you know this is part like 36 or something like that 37 so um yeah you can you can listen listen to those if you want to but appreciate you all being here i'm gonna wish you a, a nice weekend as well and i'm gonna post the the paint overs for the people that were were there on wednesday too so yeah have a nice weekend I'll speak to you later. Bye-bye.